Thanks so much for watching the asking spot. Coming up, we got. Well, who could that be? What are you doing back? So, you're back. Care to explain what happened? So you're gonna be silent about it? Fine. Let me see if I can fill in the gaps. Okay, here's the scoop. It went to someone who loved it and thought it was beautiful. However, when they saw my video on the next table I did, I'll do one of these and one of these. It'll be in the description below. Um, they liked the size of that table and then they also liked the dark stain. So we switched out. So now it's back. Then I thought, okay, I'll just go to my favorite plan B, which is I love uh, working with a consignment shop that's also a charity shop. So with them, you sell something and you don't make as much money. You make like 50% of what they make, but the other 50% goes to support the charity that they run. So that's a win-win with me. Here's the thing. They're like, uh, this lighter woods are not selling as much, so can it be a darker wood? And that's what I aim to do. So we're asking, can I remove the wonderful wax I did on this piece? Can I get it to the point where I can stain it? But I don't want to actually lose the little blue part, the florals. I still think that's kind of cool. Might be disappointed. This could be a hot mess, or it might turn into something really pretty that looks a little bit like what it does now. All right, first things first with any project, I like to clean things off. Now I do use my uh, stripping product, my homemade one, which is just 50-50 vinegar and water. And that's really not just about dirt and grime, that's about getting a buildup of the furniture polishes that are put on pieces. And that's only the beginning of what's on top of this, because as we all know, I waxed it. So what does that mean? Mineral spirits to the rescue. Wipe it down with this using just a towel and see how well I do. I do also have some fine grit, you know, the triple zero steel wool. I might give that a shot as well, just so I can really get in the grooves. As much as I'm not a fan of using steel wool. Why? It's a texture thing. Um, it does work. Did great job. This does need to be sanded, but not before it dries completely. If I went to sanding it now, it's just, no. So, wait until it dries and back at it. One eternity later. experiencing a bit of deja vu. <laughs> All right, so I flipped it upside down. I am going to just see if I like the gel stain I'm using on the very bottom of it, because if I don't, I've learned my lesson from the last time I tried to flip this thing. I don't want to have to do the whole thing all over. You may be disappointed. So, first to do that. If it turns out I like it, or well, if I even go to a different stain, I'm still going to put on a wood conditioner first before staining the regular parts, but not in this test section. I actually tried a wood stain, a regular one with this, because I felt like it went better with the blue floral pattern, and it was this dark mahogany, but because I didn't have it in a gel stain and I wanted more control, I went with the gel stain. Little did I know. More on that to come. Wood conditioner really is important to do pre-stain, um, and it's easy enough to do. You just kind of wipe it on, leave it on for about 20 minutes, and then you got to stain within that time in two hours. Uh, the old timers, though, for woodworking, they usually use just mineral spirits. But here is our winner for what we're going to do for our gel stain.
like we'll have to go to plan B. There's a plan B? So, putting on stain. Uh, gel stain's great. You put it on, you leave it for a little while. Um, they say two to three minutes, but it's humid enough where I am that I didn't have to leave it on that long. And then you wipe it off. Now, you'll notice I've covered up quite a bit of the blue flowers. Uh, right around now, I'm kind of going, yeah, I'm going to have to try a different plan. Here's the thing, though. My biggest mistake, okay, to, to date for this day, <laughs> is that I didn't take off the inlays. I should have done that right from the get-go, gotten those um, blue floral papers off, stained the whole thing, and then proceeded. But instead... I gave myself just that much more work. Oh, but first, I did have to try staining over them to see if that would work. It didn't. And voila. Now, it's time to restain and add some decorative pieces here. Crush your head. Crush, crush. Crush you. So when staining, you want to make sure that you've got gloves on and you also got your mask on because you're still getting some heavy duty fumes there. I always wear glasses too, just to keep my eyes protected. I don't want anything splashing up. And when you're done with staining, you want to also leave all those items you used out to dry out because they can become combustible if you kind of cram them up into a bag and shut them off. So let them air out. And yep, even cleaning up, I got dirty. It's time for the top coat and I'm doing something a little different. I picked up a wipe on polyurethane and it wasn't until after I got it and did some more research with one of my favorite YouTubers, I want to say stubby nubs, but I'm not sure if I'm going to have that right. So I'll do one of these. And of course I'll have a link to the video I'm talking about in my description box where he gives this great tutorial on how to make your own polyurethane. Now you might also be like myself and is like, mm, I'm not going to play around with making my own, but it does seem relatively simple. The important takeaway though is what it actually is. This is a combination of polyurethane and mineral spirits. So when you realize that, you go, wait a minute, that first coat of this is going to be really super thin because the mineral spirits are going to evaporate away. That's going to leave a very thin coat of polyurethane. So there's two things to keep in mind. One, it means very likely you will not cover the whole piece. Don't try to. Treat it like a spray paint. You know, just relax and plan on covering it in the second coat. Two, when you do want to sand, it's not between first and second coat because you're probably just going to sand that first coat off you want to sand between second and third coat. The second coat is primarily to come back through and get those spots that you missed. And then the third is to put a nice top coat on top of it. And speaking of sanding it, I will be doing it, but I'm gonna just do it with a brown piece of paper because you could just get like a 600, 400 grit sandpaper. I mean, it really doesn't take a lot just to get any little bit of flying dust debris that might have landed in it while it was drying. Going to down some gloves and of course I'm going to use a lint-free cloth. Um, I've seen people use shop towels for it as well when applying it. You're pretty much just going to rub it on as you please trying to make sure you get into the grain. So a circular pattern works well for that. I try to finish mine up though still with strokes across it with the grain. While the smell of polyurethane is still in the air, um, I am done though. Finally got to the third coat and before we show you what it looks like now, let's look at where we started. Okay, that was this go around. Let's go back to the original. And if you could, please consider subscribing. I promise I'm not sure what my next video will be, but I guarantee it will not be this table. Um, <laughs> or for that matter, any other curve fine round table. I have a history of round table curve finds that have thrown me for a loop. So yeah, 
not going to be the next video. But here is the final results. And while it was annoying that I had to go through this all again, I am still pretty pleased with how it turned out. Thanks so much for watching The Asking Spot. Bloopers are next. Um, but you're gonna use mineral spirits on this, or I am, and I'm going to blah, 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 too much. A local charity thrift shop that they do a consignment to birdies. Blah, blah, blah. We'll try it one more. So you're back. Care to. That's just not right. <laughs> and if you could, please consider. That should hopefully turn out to a lovely piece that's got three coats in the end. I had to check to make sure I had three up. <laughs> but that should do it.